as I began to watch things unravel in our school system and looking around at the culture and seeing how eerily similar things are to the days of Noah and the days of Lot, when I began to watch things like the suspension of Tanner Cross when he spoke out at a public hearing concerning the transgender policy and the subsequent passage by our school board of that transgender policy, the approval of sexually explicit material, reading materials available to students, the suppression of parents' free speech at school board meetings, the now known dishonesty and cover-up by some school board members and the superintendent concerning two sexual assaults at two different schools by the same student, and I could go on and on. I started to ask myself, what can we as a church do to help build you all up in your faith and to help encourage you in the Lord during these days? What can we do to help rescue parents, students, and teachers from the school system and create an environment where students can learn and teachers can teach with a biblical worldview to help equip the next generation to be strong in their faith so that they can go out and be true to the biblical mission of winning their world for Christ. And to that end, I am happy to announce to you that after much prayer and discussion with our elders and pastoral leadership, we will be launching Cornerstone Christian Academy. Yep. When we first started Cornerstone 30 years ago, I, I, I had a burden for a Christian school, but it just didn't seem like the right timing. And to be honest, you know, 20, 25, 30 years ago, the idea of a Christian school was something we thought was nice. But it's no longer time for niceties. It's a time of necessity. And so we're going to start a Christian school. but. We can't do it here in this facility. And the reason we can't do it in this facility is because when we built it, we didn't build it to certain codes that would be necessary in classrooms for operating a school. And uh, we've maxed out the plans of our 32 acres and we don't have ball fields and things that would be good for athletic programs for a school. And so through a series of events, that I won't take time to talk about how this happened, this happened, this happened. It came to our attention that a private school was for sale. Um, you know, the way that God has just led over the last 30 years here at Cornerstone, I can just tell you that, you know, there are times that God has just opened doors and there's times that God has closed doors. And we've tried to be faithful to go through the doors that are open and we've tried to be faithful never to kick the doors that aren't. And, um, and at the same time, never getting ahead of God, but never lagging too far behind either. Just really trying to discern, God, what are you doing and how can we keep in step with what you're doing? And so when this came to our attention that there was this private school for sale, we're just like, is this all part, Lord, of what you're stirring here? And so we put a contract on it. And um, part of the contract was to do a 90-day feasibility study. And so we had architects, we had builders, we had engineers, we had lawyers, we had financial consultants, and we completed that 90-day study, and we are satisfied with the results. And so we have a ratified contract for the purchase of the former Middleburg Academy in Middleburg, Virginia. And so... I want to introduce you to the hopeful future campus of Cornerstone Christian Academy. 
on that. So this is situated on 89 and a half acres. Uh, it is a beautiful campus. Um, it has uh, this uh, historic manor house that was the original part of the property. It's 13,000 square feet. Uh, it served for Middleburg Academy. It served as the administration offices um, and the uh, registration offices. And it has a library and a small chapel. And uh, in addition, it has classroom spaces on this campus of 70,000 square feet. It has uh, 22 classrooms. Um, part of this was built in uh, the late 60s. Uh, the other part was built in the mid 70s. And um, it has a uh, cafeteria. It has a music room. It has other large rooms in the facility. It has ball fields. This is soccer, lacrosse field. It has a high school regulation baseball field. And uh, when you go inside, they, uh, they abandoned the place in March of 2020, just when COVID started. And uh, this is the classrooms. I mean, you know, it's, it's like hand us the keys. Uh, we'll be glad to, to make use out of it. And so uh, what I'm showing you is the way that they, that they pretty much left it. Now, you know, it's been vacant for a couple of years, so it doesn't look as polished as this, but They've, they've left all the equipment, they've le left uh, everything that you're seeing here, and um, this is what we have under contract right now. Uh, so, yeah. Look at this, gymnasium. Has a, a beautiful indoor gymnasium. Uh, I, you know, I think it's, it's possible we might even consider like a satellite Sunday campus out there. So, you know, this is a, a beautiful place that the Lord is providing for us. Yeah, I put the CCA on the top in faith. <laughs> um, about five buses came with this deal. So listen, some of the things I'm saying are things that we are hopeful to do. I can't be too definitive until we actually work out all the details going forward. But we hope to perhaps provide bus transportation from the parking lot of Cornerstone Chapel. It is, it'll be, it's 23 miles from door to door from this location. Those of you in Percival and around Hill, it's actually like, a, Middleburg is like a triangle below you. It's only 13 miles from Percival, 13 miles from Round Hill. Um, I timed it from the roundabout by Patrick Henry College to um, this location, it was 15 minutes. So um, to some it might feel like it's, it's a distant ways to go. Um, uh, to others, um, like myself, it's, uh, it's a beautiful campus that uh, God has brought our way that we hope to utilize going forward. Our initial idea is this, uh, it has the capacity as it's built now for 500 students. And our initial desire is to open K through eight and then to add a high school grade each year thereafter until it's fully K through 12. Um, some of you might be wondering when will it open and what will it cost? <laughs> so here's what you need to know about when it will open. My desire was, man, we gotta, we gotta open this as soon as possible. But when we started looking at the realities of the renovation project, as, as nice as the pictures looked, it's, it's gonna be a few million dollars to renovate this place because um, the HVAC system is outdated and some of it non-functional. We need to totally have a new HVAC system, which is a pretty high price tag. This, this property runs off of four wells. It has its own water treatment plant. We need to bring that up to a better standard. And, uh, and then we have the supply chain dilemma where builders and contractors, it takes months to get things that we might need. In addition, we have to hire a headmaster. We have to hire faculty members. Uh, we have to get a website designed. We have to open registration. Some of you with kids in private Christian schools already have registration starting. We're already behind the eight ball with a lot of these things. And also the owner 
who is selling it to us needs to wait until August to actually go to settlement because of tax deferment on this schedule. And so for all those reasons, I wish I could say we were going to open this fall, but for all those reality reasons, we will be opening, but we're gonna be opening the fall of 2023. And here is a QR slide for, I encourage you right now, get out your phone, QR code, get out your phones, take a picture of the QR code, because this is gonna take you to a page where you will be able to pre-register your child. Now, we're not taking any money and the pre-registration is not a guarantee your kid is gonna get accepted. It just will give us a priority list so that when we are ready to launch enrollment, you will get the first priority for those of you who show interest. There's also an email address there on the screen, school at cornerstonechapel.net. Email us if you're interested. Uh, perhaps in working here. We're going to be hiring a headmaster. We're going to be hiring teachers. We're going to be hiring grounds people and, and other support staff. So, or if you have questions, you can email that address there at school at cornerstonechapel.net. After the last service, this will all get launched on our website. So you'll be able, if you forget all of this, or if you don't take a picture of the QR code, you'll be able to go to our website. We'll have all the links there in place. When you leave here today, if you want to take a picture of the QR code, you can go to the kiosk tables. They will have the QR code there if you want to take a picture of that uh, with your phone. And so, um, you know, God is at work here, but obviously the purchase, the renovation, and listen, I'm believing for an endowment also that's going to fund this school. Um, let me tell you something. I don't know if this is pie in the sky or if this is the Lord, but I'm going to tell you something that, that occurred to me that I think just because it came right out of the blue, I, I feel like this is from the Lord. Many months ago, before this school even came up for purchase, before we even thought about a school, I was watching TV and a commercial came up for St. Jude's Hospital. How many of you have seen those commercials for St. Jude's? And St. Jude's Hospital runs completely off an endowment, and then that's why they have ads on television to give donations. It's a beautiful hospital that helps particularly kids and families who have uh, kids with cancer. And when you go for treatment at St. Jude's, you get charged zero dollars because of the endowment and donations that fund that hospital. You don't have to pay any charges, and they'll put parents up in hotels nearby or give them lodging while their kids are getting treatment at the hospital. It's, a, it's an incredible. And I'm watching this, and out of the blue, this thought was, why can't we have a Christian school like that? I mean, it, I don't know that it's ever been done, but okay, there's a first for everything. Why can't we have a school that has an endowment so that, yes, you'll have a strict admissions policy, but kids won't even have to pay anything. Now, we're not there yet. That's gonna be an $80 million to $100, $100 million endowment needed to run a school like this. Some of you online or any of you here, some of you have the means to strike a check like that and you know who you are. <laughs> Look, but obviously this is a multi-million dollar endeavor. The purchase, the renovation and endowment. So feel free to give towards this project too. And I'm going to tell you an encouraging thing. This is how the Lord does little things of confirmation. So this week, I was in my office and Marilyn from our accounting office came, came to my office and um, she said, I, I, I want to let you know something. I said, okay. So we have, you know, online viewers from around the world. This one dear lady, she might be watching today, who watched, lives in Southern Virginia, watching online, heard me allude to the possibility this is, this is just during the week, so before I made today's announcement, the possibility we might be starting a Christian school. And this lady, God laid it on her heart, she sent to the church a check this week for $20,000 for the school. So, so praise God for that. And, you know, and God's like little confirmation, and, and this is a big endeavor. This is a big endeavor, but we think it is well worth it and we think that it is time. And let me tell you this to give God praise too. Despite this future project and other projects we're going to be doing and developing our own campus here, listen, because of God's faithfulness, through your generosity, we are still on track to pay off this building within a year. Within a year. So God is good. And I'll, and I'll close with these, with these few comments. 
Look, you do what is right for your family and for your children. For some of you, it's homeschooling. For some of you, it is private schooling. For others of you, it may be Christian school. For some of you, it's public school, okay? Look, you know, I don't want to disparage all of Loudoun County public schools in making this announcement today. There are some wonderful teachers, wonderful administrators and principals. There really are. Some, some wonderful cafeteria ladies and uh, some wonderful uh, building engineers. But I make this announcement because things have changed and times have changed. To take nothing away from some of the wonderful people who are a part of our public school system, and many of them are sitting right here in, in our congregation. But because times have changed and things have changed, we wanted to offer an alternative to you. This will not be an alternative for everybody. We get that. We're not expecting, like, everybody has to, you know, sign on to this. It's not for everybody. Our church is not for everybody. This is the beauty of having options in our world, okay? But we wanted to at least provide an option because we're concerned for the trend of our culture as we get closer to the return of Christ. And what are we going to do to help build one another up and encourage each other in the Lord? And I want you to also know that we have reached out to all the other Christian schools in our area to give them advance notice before today's announcement. They've all been uh, very uh, conciliatory. They, they understand our desire is to work in cooperation, not competition with them. And so they've all been very gracious in, in their conversations uh, with us. So what can you do in the meantime? Pray, there's a lot to be done between now and opening day. You can give. There's a lot to be done materially uh, and in terms of operation as well. And if you feel led, uh, we would invite you uh, when it officially opens to apply to teach, to apply to enroll your kids, to be a part of this new step that we are taking as a church. Um, this will not be a charter school because we do not want it tied in to the state or federal guidelines or monies. because we want to be true to teach the mission from a biblical worldview. And we know that sometimes that can be tricky with government stuff, so we're not going that route. This is going to be fully funded by donations and the ministry of our church as a ministry and mission of our church. I'll close with this. Adolf Hitler said, I want to raise a generation of young people who are devoid of conscience imperious, relentless, and cruel, end quote. What we want to do is Proverbs 22, 6. You train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. This is all part of our attempt as a church to build you up and your children up in your most holy faith so that you and they can go out and be faithful to the mission of winning the world for Christ. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Let's pray. Stand if you would. Let's pray. Lord, you've overheard, and we pray and trust that you've been glorified by, by all that you've overheard. And we trust, Lord, that you've led us this far and you will continue to lead us. You will continue to provide for us. You will continue to supply the right personnel. You will continue to supply the right curriculum and, and the right students and just everything, Lord, so that this future school can bring much glory and honor to you. So that the next generation of young people can be built up, not devoid of conscience, but having a moral conscience rooted in your word, in the faith and love of Jesus Christ, to be able to go out into our world and to win the world for Christ without allowing the world's influence to take hold of our own hearts. And so in every way, we commit this to you. We surrender this to you. Go before us, Lord. We're trusting you in every way. And we're thankful that you've brought these things to our attention, Lord. Now we just want to be faithful to follow you. 
to honor you, to glorify you. We love you and we praise you and we commit this to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you all. Have a great day.